Okay, I'd like to talk to you about a couple of bits of kit which are sat over my shoulder now. Uh, as you may have noticed, my videos have changed their focus slightly from being sat next to lakes chasing carp to going around and trying to catch big fish of different species. I've spent quite a lot of time trying to chase a double figure bream, failing miserably this year, uh, last year, sorry, the last 12 months. And I also spent the winter chasing a six pound chub, which I failed at, and a three pound roach, which I also failed at. I'm sure it's just me. Uh, but in that time, I've actually done a bit of shopping and I found some tackle to actually help me do that. Now then, the first thing was last March, I went out uh, and I decided to buy myself a set pair of rods that would enable me to fish uh, feeders at short to medium range, which were considerably lighter than my carp gear that I was using and my two and three quarter pound test curve rods I had at the time uh, and would enable me to have a bit of fun with bream. I landed on my feet straight away. I didn't want to spend a lot of money, so I looked around and I found these. This is, if I can get it in the light properly, a Darrant Valley 11 foot, one and a quarter pound test curve rod, LSG. LSG stands for, what was it, low set guides. Okay. It's got a lovely little cork handle. It's got a nice little few, well, Darrant Valley reel seat. Uh, it's got double leg guides up the whole length, down to a six mil tip. And uh, these are very, very, very nice. Uh, I've done one improvement on them since I've bought them. That is, I've painted the tip white, as you can see there, just a the tip section. Hold it against me so you can get a bit of contrast. Uh, and the reason for that is when I'm fishing with these and they're sunk underneath the water, or uh, I'm river fishing with them, I might have a tight line to a bite alarm, so I'd rather just have a little bit of indication as well. Uh, now then, these rods are fantastic. Uh, they are 49.99 through the tackle box in Kent. Uh, basically, I've used them fishing 50 gram feeders with size 18 hooks, catching roach up to £2.7. I can cast them 70 odd yards, uh, and that's with my CS5s and 11 pound Colmic reel line. So it's a thick line, well, thickish line, uh, big feeders, and you hook into the fish, and yeah, you, you feel as though it's not the rod's fault if you lose a fish. I have lost a fair few roach this year. I'm gonna hold my hands up, and I think a lot of that is down to me not hooking them properly on the rig, and the fact that the lake I've been fishing for them is full of lilies, and they keep on running me in the lilies, and when you're fishing that far out, there's nothing you can do if they kite left or right. So it's not the rod's fault. The rods are brilliant. The reels are brilliant. So yeah, if you're in the market for a pound and a quarter test curve rod, and you don't need a quiver tip, get some of them. They're awesome, absolutely awesome. There, uh, there's a video that I will uh, of me back in last March where I had a 30 pound mirror carp on there. I'll post a bit of the footage up about now. As you can see, the action's phenomenal. It's all up in the top half. It's got plenty of casting power up down low. And yeah, I've never felt like I was gonna lose that fish, even though it took me into a snag. Uh, yeah, it took me into a branch and then it just kicked out, it was lovely. So yeah, that is the Darren Valley 11 foot, 1.25 pound test curve, LSG rod, fantastic. Uh, they come in a little cloth bag. This is the one downside I've found of them. Uh, it comes in a little really, skimpy cloth bag which is supposed to be a rod bag uh that lasted about three weeks uh hit its first bramble and then just disintegrated 
that is the only problem I've had with them. Uh, the rings are maybe a little bit small, uh, and I, if I rebuild it, uh, which I will probably do myself, I'll put single leg guides on the tip. And that's it, really. Uh, for a 50 quid rod, you can't ask much more. Uh, which takes me on some float rods now. So this winter, I've been spending a lot of time on the Dorset Star and the Hampshire Raven, chasing chub and roach. Uh, it started off around about last September. I fished a match on the Trent. So, uh, one of my mates up there had a cadence 15 foot number one. Uh, and I looked at that rod and I thought, hmm, that's a bit sexy. And then I had a play with it. It's like, it's, it's nice. It's not quite as soft as my acolytes, but it's nice. If only they made something softer in the tip. They did. And I bought one. I have to say that this cadence 15 foot zero possibly the best roach rod I have ever used. Uh, it's got a beautiful soft tip, it's got enough oomph in the middle and butt sections to be able to cast a float if you have to. Uh, as you're playing a fish it bends really soft, it cushions a, uh, the tip section is so soft it just cushions the hook hold every time uh, and then it'll go down into the middle section it just keeps on bending as much as you need it to. Uh, yeah I mean these cadence rods they come with Fuji reel seats, uh, they come with cork handles, a lot of EVA, let's be honest, but you're not paying mega bucks for them. You've got Fuji Alconite guides, and they come in, wait for it, an oblong tube, so you can fit more of them into your rod bag. That's not the best bit about those tubes, he says, rummaging. I've got one here, because at the top of the tube, you've got that. That little cap with that label on, it's fantastic. You open up your rod bag and you can see all your rods laid out because of that little label. I've been doing this for years. And now people are finally producing them. It's great. Cheers, James. Okay, so if there's, anyway, that rod, brilliant. Brilliant roach rod. However, if there is one downside of it, it hasn't got enough oomph. So before Christmas, I think it was, I was fishing on the Avon up and around Salisbury and uh, I was fishing a stretch and there was some trout there. And uh, as soon as I hooked a three pound sea trout, I knew that that rod was not the rod to catch me chub. Uh, basically these trout were running me up and down the river, ruined the roach fishing in that swim, uh, but they were great fun. But I just didn't have enough backbone to lift the fish up uh, to try and net them. So I uh, got online, well, got home, turned around to the wife and I said, honey, I'm, I've got to buy a new rod. She went, you've got enough rods. And I went, mm, okay, I've got enough rods. I was then on the internet and shopping. Uh, I had a look around, I had lots of options ahead of me again. I could have looked at Daiwa, Dreddon, and then I thought, well, I really like those cadence rods. Let's see what they've got. And uh, after watching many videos of curves of rods, uh, where people have been playing them, uh, playing fish, and after watching, uh, looking at lots of reviews, I decided to treat myself to a 15 foot number two. This is epic. Now then, the 15 foot number one has got a casting rating of 1 to 15 grams. This one has got a casting rating of 2 to 20 grams. Now what does that mean in real terms? Well, what that means is that that one's really good for small floats, light lines, small hooks. This one is better for bigger floats, bigger hooks, stronger lines. Uh, I took this on the Avon, uh, on some middle reaches of the Avon, and I had some chub. Uh, I've put a bit of uh, footage up here. As you can see from that bit there, I was uh, hooking chub in the middle of the river and it was a really quick river that day. They are all around three to four pound and I was having no problems with them to be fair. Uh, I went on a few weeks later to a different stretch uh, when the water level came down a little bit and I was getting fish to just shy of five. And uh, again, I had no problems. I had one fish out of about 10, which took me into the margins and did me there. And I had a couple of hook pulls, but that was all on the first visit when the water was quicker than walking pace where I was planning to play the fish through. So it was 
good day, good day. But yeah, I've fished this with bow lows up to six grams so far with no issues, uh, and big loafers of again about six to eight grams, uh, and it casts them well, uh, and you can set the line through it, uh, set the hook through it. I fish it with four to five pound main line, hooks up to size 11s, uh, down to about 16, no issues. Uh, the zero I've used with floats up to about I think two and a half three grams something like that uh, Yeah, three grams off there top of my head rings a bell. I think it's the biggest Olivet I've used on it uh, And again, it's perfect uh, it, it, It's not it's perfectly suited to that uh, test curve of rod uh, or that casting weight of rod But yeah, like I say they've both got Fuji Elkanite guides. They've both got Fuji reel seats They're made out of 40 and 36 ton carbon. I've got a little note here saying they're very nice and they are very very nice They're light enough to hold on to all day that hold light enough to hold on to full extension uh, For extended periods of time. I wouldn't want to do it all day because you're gonna get shoulders like mine uh, yeah, and both of those rods retail at $139.99 through the Cadence website. So, if you're sat in the garage, like me, looking at your kit, going, I need a new set of river rods for fishing the float. I've owned many rods in my time. Uh, I've got some old MAP Ultra 2 sat back there, which I haven't seen the light of day this winter. Uh, I've got some uh, Acolytes back there, which uh, I've tried to sell, but nobody wants. Uh, Oh, will you deliver? No, I won't deliver. Anyway, uh, but I'm going to hang on to them now, uh, simply because they've got a different job. Uh, and that's it, really. I can't say much more. Fantastic bits of kit. I mean, between the Darren Valley at 50 quid a rod and those at 140 quid a rod, you, it's all low to mid-range. Uh, I would never spend more than £150 on a rod.